friend, let's sing Jesus Loves Me. Is that okay? <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know. I can't hear you. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Now you can have a seat. I'm sorry I had to put you through that. Oh, when I was a child, a young child, every year around Easter time, for some reason, they, one of the networks would always put on The Wizard of Oz. How many of you like that movie? It's pretty cool, right? But it wasn't the movie so much that got me. At that, whenever they put that on, I knew that there was a, a little bowl of jelly beans coming too. <laughs> yes, I like my jelly beans. But uh, mom would always give each one of us kids a, a bowl of jelly beans when it came on, and she would shut the lights off so we were like in a movie theater, and we got to have them that way. Now let's test your memory this morning. You remember the movie. So Dorothy met a lot of different characters along the way. She ran into the scarecrow who needed, he was looking, he needed what? A brain. And she ran into the tinsman, tin woodsman, who needed a? And she ran in, I know, like I'm getting, I, everybody's excited, right? Yeah. So the cowardly lion needed what? Courage. courage, right? Needed courage. What did Dorothy, we knew what Dorothy needed because she kept saying it like a hundred times during the movie. What did she want? She wanted to go home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home, right? Have you ever felt that way? That you just wanted to go home? Now, don't everybody make a mass exit towards the doors. I don't mean now. But have you ever felt that way? You were somewhere and you're just worn out, maybe tired, and you're like, I just want to go home. Been there, done that, right? I remember in 1984, I was... Uh, January 16th, 84, I remember the day exactly when I was asked to come to New York to help open the store here. Pat remembers Wise Markets. And man, I'll tell you what, I'm like, where is Elmira, New York? I've never even heard of this place before. No offense, sorry. I came from the big city of Williamsport, you know, <laughs> the big town down the road. But uh, I remember, man, I didn't have any friends here. I didn't even know a single person in the whole area and I still came. I was uh, working away here, and like, man, throughout that time, many times I had this, like, I really just want to go home. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't know a lot of people. I, at home, it's safe, right? There's that safety, and you know so many people, and just that comfort of home. There's just that specialness of being home. As Christians, though, we have to know that this world is not our home. Did you know that? This world is not our home. This is only a temporary place for us. Isn't that awesome to know? Now, throughout this service, I'm going to ask you if you are excited. And I want to see the excitement. I know. I get wound up up here. I know. I don't know if you can do that, like, but I will try. There's a song. I don't know if you know this song. It's called Can't Feel at Home in This World Anymore. How many of you know that song? Yeah, oh, not, not very many, right? So listen to some of these words. This world is it's so perfect for us. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. The chorus, oh, Lord, you know that I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. That's a perfect song for us. This is not our home. This is a temporary place where we are at. Isn't it exciting to know that we have heaven waiting for us someday? Yes. If we've, there, someone's ready to go. There we go. So <laughs> if we've accepted Jesus as our Savior, we've got something better to look forward to, don't we? So much more. And no pain and no sorrow. Isn't that exciting too? This morning we're going to look at a passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. And it talks about our earthly bodies and about what awaits us in heaven. 
And as, I, as we read them, I just hope the excitement for heaven just fills up inside of each one of us. I hope we get that, that burning fire inside of us like, yeah, I want to go to heaven, but also know that God's got us here for a reason. That he's put us in this very place at this very time for a specific reason. Let's look at those verses. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we, are, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now, sometimes when we read passages in different translations, we go, what in the world is going on? We have a teen, well, that always says this. Um, when we say something to her, she goes, she'll act like she hurt and she'll go, wait, what? Oh, she's right over there. Lily, I'm sorry. I had to call you out this morning, didn't I? <laughs> We're going to read this from another translation, the NLT, and see if it gives you any more clarity. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. Let's just break that down just a little bit. I want to look at that first verse again. There we go. The first three words just, just hit me in the face as I was preparing for this message. And hopefully it will be too. For we know. We have confidence as believers in Jesus. We have confidence. We know it's ingrained in our hearts without a shadow of a doubt that there is something beyond this life, right? That this world is just temporary. Are you with me? We know that, don't we? Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. We're going now. <laughs> One thing that bothers me so much is that sometimes people, um, too many people are living with a hope so religion. Uh, the, they hope that they're saved. They hope that they have, uh, they possess eternal life. They hope that there is a future waiting for them in heaven. We can't be that way. We shouldn't have a hope so religion. We should have a no so salvation. There shouldn't be any doubts in our minds, in our hearts, that there is something better, that our eternity is secure in heaven, right? right? It's ready for us. How can we know for sure? Well, the Bible tells us, 1 John 5, 13 says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Do you believe his word? Yes. Do you believe his word is 100% true? Yes. Is there anything in this Bible that is not true? That's right. I, I remember one time hearing a saying, um, his word said it, I believe it, and that settles it. You ever hear that? This is inerrant. It's perfect the way it is. Another way is the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us. Do you know that? When you accept Jesus, you've got the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Romans 8, 16, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And then this really important way also, we have genuine love for others. You know, I, I was thinking of Candy and Mark as they were giving in that announcement this morning. It wasn't just something that they do. That's from their heart. They truly love these people that they are helping out. They are truly loving these people. And that's how we are supposed to be. To remember the two greatest commandments, the, what's number one? I'm going to let you tell me this time. What's the greatest commandment? With all your heart, with all your soul, your strength, with all your might, right? And what's the second one? Love As yourself, right? Yep. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. Man, love your neighbors as yourself. 
That can be tough to do sometimes. But God has called us to do that, to love others. And I know that um, through all of that passage we just read, Paul had great confidence about his eternity because he loved people too, right? It showed in his life. Isn't it awesome to know that when we do receive our new bodies, someday we're going to get new bodies, right? <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for that. <laughs> I've been working on this one for a long time and nothing's happening. But, <laughs> but we know that we're going to get new bodies. But when we get the new bodies, where are we going to be? We're already going to be with Jesus, aren't we? Isn't that cool? Isn't that exciting? Yes. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, keep on shouting it out. <laughs> Philippians 3, 20 and 21 tells us this. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Thank you, Jesus, right? So how can we not be super excited about this? How can we not be, like, knowing that, yep, this is just a, a shell. This is going to be gone, and I've got so much more to look forward to. Let's move on to verse 4. As you can see, I'm a little jumpy. I'm like wound up today, like always, right? Yeah. But verse 4, let's look at that. Um, in verse 4, we see that Paul uses words like groan. How many of you ever groan before? <laughs> Everybody, everybody's hand should be up right now. How many of you ever felt burdened down by the, this world, by things in your life, right? Oh, my goodness, all the time, right? Temporary. Keep that word in mind. Temporary. There's so much more that's coming. Let me say this. Real life, did you know that real life is found in Jesus alone? Did you know that? Yeah, only in Jesus. So we have, there's different trials that we face. There's common trials that everybody faces in life. We're all going to go through things. Matthew 5.45 says this. In this, Jesus said, the Father causes the Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. You know how we know that's true? Think back to Calvary. Think back to Good Friday and to Calvary. What happened on Calvary? There were three crosses, right? On two of those crosses were thieves. And they were being punished for the sins, the crimes that they committed, right? On the third cross was who? Jesus, who did not sin. He was sinless and blameless, and yet he died on that cross. And praise God that he did it for you and for me, right? We would have no future to look forward to if Jesus had not given his life willingly on that cross for us. Think about the world around you. How many of you uh, have read the newspaper or watched the news and saw, like, the, the tornado and stuff going on down south? Man, right? There's so much going on in our world. That's some of the trials that we all face. We're going to go through things. Life wasn't meant to be perfect for us until we get to heaven. Christians face many trials too. How, this is not really a question, but do you know what? A lot, some people think that when you accept Christ as your Savior that it's going to be awesome from here. It's just the opposite. Satan hits us even more, doesn't he? He... He comes at us harder and harder, and he tries to uh, give us problems, things that we just, that'll make us forget about God. That's what he wants to do. But people in the Bible that, we've, that we remember from Sunday school reading about, we remember James was beheaded, right? Peter was put in prison and was going to behead, be beheaded. Stephen was stoned, wasn't he? And Paul himself, that we're talking about today, uh, was even uh, in prison and out of prison so many times. Right now, all over the world, people are being persecuted, and I don't think we know what real persecution is. People are being persecuted for saying that they believe in Jesus Christ. Isn't that sad? But this body is just a tent that we live in. That's what Paul is saying through this passage. You know, in verse 8, we're going to skip down to verse 8 here. It says, we are confident, I say, and we prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. You know, Paul was talking about what heaven was like. Have you ever thought about what heaven was like, is going to be like? Have you ever thought about that? 
My, my father passed away 13 years ago. And my brother-in-law, Frank, used to go around singing in churches. And this one song that he sang at my dad's funeral stuck in my mind and always comes back to me. And it describes heaven. Listen to these words. Think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven. Of touching a hand and finding it God's. Of breathing new air and finding it celestial. Of waking up in glory and finding it home. That's what we have to look forward to. You know, I'm ready for this old body to go. I'm ready. When I was 45, I used to say, this was my favorite saying, I can, do, I can still do it all. When I turned 50, my body said, I, I think I can still do it all. And then now, a few years later, after 50, I'm not going to say what it is, um, I realized that my mind is saying you can still do it all, but my body is saying, don't even think about it. <laughs> this world takes a toll on us, doesn't it? But we have new bodies that we are going to have someday. If someone asked you, why do you want to go to heaven so badly, what would you say? Huh? I want to go home. You're ready to go home. Ready to go home. Would you say that you want to go see Jesus? Yes. And there's a lot of people that we know in our lives, too, that have gone on before us. And we want to see them again, too, right? Yes. There's so much that we want to see. But how about the things that we won't see in heaven? Like there's not going to be any more sorrow, right? right. Gone. No more tears. No more evil. No more, evil. No more suffering, right? You know the back pains that you get when you're walking... You wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, my goodness. Or your leg starts hurting out of the blue. Won't be in heaven. How about no more death because of what Jesus did for us on that cross, right? No more sin. All the things are gone. And I like this. No more Satan, you know, because Satan is, I say it, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I didn't say it in the first one. Satan's a jerk. Do you believe that? Yeah. He is a jerk who wants to, Take our attention and our focus off of God. Revelation 20.10 says this, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophets had been thrown. They were tormented day and night forever and ever. That's his future. That's not my future. Is it yours? I don't want to go there. So I get excited about heaven. I get really excited about heaven. There's a song... Uh, by this group called Mercy Me. They, they wrote this song called Homesick. I know we're pushing the time. Bear with me. The, the lead singer, Bart Millard, wrote this song uh, because as an expression of grief and longing after the band had like eight people that were connected to the band pass away within like four or five week time. Can you imagine the grief that they were carrying? For all... For everyone who's lost someone, you know, that, that pain never really goes completely away, but God does help us with it. You know, I think of like the, I mentioned this in the first service, the Vince and Louise uh, Jadice. We think of Margaret who sat right here and was always there and, and just had that beautiful smile on her face all the time. You know, and I think of my mom who like three years ago was sitting, four years ago, sitting over here and... Many of you knew her, you saw her, and she loved everybody, she really did. But she's in heaven now. And you know what, even the pain hurts, but it's not the end. We know we're, I know I'm gonna see her again. Isn't that exciting? So why aren't we more excited about heaven? Well, because one thing is we gotta remember, even though we're excited about going to heaven, God has placed each one of us here at this very place in, on commu Community Wesleyan Church on the corner of Grand Central Ave. Do I have to tell you where we're at? In this very community for a reason. And that reason is to tell people who, about him. There are many people out here in our, in our whole community that don't even know who Jesus is. And that's sad. We need to do something about it. In a moment, I'm going to have um, that video of that song played, but I want to say this. I am homesick for heaven. I can't wait to get there and meet Jesus and see my family members and David and Daniel and just so many people that I've read about in his word, but I'm, 
also not willing to let anyone I know leave this earth without knowing the saving grace of Jesus. And that's the attitude we need to have. I want everyone that I know to be in heaven with me, don't you? So what are you going to do about it? This is where the rubber meets the road, as they say. We're going to play that video in just a moment, but I'm going to ask everyone to do me a favor. So everyone was given one of these white cards as you came in. Hopefully everyone got one. I'm going to ask that if there's someone in your, in your heart or your mind today that God has placed in your heart, uh, someone that you've been praying for, that they uh, will see who Jesus is, their need for Jesus, and you just want to give them to the Lord, I'm going to ask that you write their name down on that white card, okay? And then as the song plays... And as the Spirit leads, I'm going to ask that we bring them to the, to the altar and give them to the Lord. Just lay them down and know that they're in his hands. Keep on praying for them, but give them to the Lord. There may be somebody here today who has never even accepted Jesus as their Savior. I'm going to be right down front here. And maybe that's you. If, if you've never made that decision for Christ, today can be a new day. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what's going to happen in five minutes. God knows, though. God may call us home. The Lord may return any minute. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? Do you know where your eternity is going to be? Let me just finish before we play the song. There's no place like home. Preparing for the last song. Let's just pray over these requests here. Let's pray. Father, we give each name, each person, each life that has been brought forward to you. Lord, we lay them at your feet. Father, we know that they can't be in any better hands. We know that, Lord, you will work in their hearts. We just pray for uh, their lives to change. Father, speak into their hearts. Let them see you even for the very first time. Lord, use us how you will in their lives. But, Father, just work, we pray. We just praise you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' precious name, amen.